All right, in this video, we're going to talk about a co-signing um, individual uh, mother co-signed for the daughter. Daughter didn't continue paying for the vehicle. Mother is getting sued. Uh, before I talk about it, I want to tell you, and I'm, I say this all the time, do not co-sign for your kids on vehicles. Do not co-sign for people on vehicles because a lot of people do not seem to understand and they kind of tw twist the words around when you're doing it. They will say, you know, you're just co-signing for the credit. It is not. You're actually co-signing for the loan itself. And really what I've seen happen where people don't even understand this is that really you're the first person on the loan, not the second person. But it really doesn't matter. When they have a co-signer, they have two people to go after for the money. That's basically what they're doing. So if you want to, like, say, what's the bottom line of co-signing? The bottom line of co-signing is that you're co-signing. If that person does not pay, that they can come after you for the money. They can sue you, take you to court. That's what's happening to, to this uh, young lady. So she co-signed for her daughter for a vehicle. She couldn't afford the payments now. She is being sued. The, the, the mom is being sued. She uh, uh, asked for them, let's see, copy of the uh, signed car loan contract, which is what you should do regardless. Mm -hmm. Even if you did co-sign, you want to get all of the documentation from that loan because there are certain documents that you may not have or you just may not be able to find them. They sent her the copies uh, and they sent the car to auction. Uh, let's see, the bill and a copy of the bill of sale from the auction. So she got the copy of the bill of sale, which is what I tell people to do. And now she's asking, is there a way to fight in this in court or just have a judgment? And also uh, had also signed up for gap insurance, but they failed to send us, send me that contract with the paperwork. So keep fighting to get that paperwork with the gap insurance because that could lower the amount that was, uh, that was uh, uh, on the vehicle. Now the gap insurance also may be only covered if the car was in, was damaged and uh, it was in an accident and then they covered what was uh, the difference between what you owe and what the, the payment that you had left on the car. That's what normal gap would be. But there's also insurances that would pay and gap could be offering that as a service too where they would actually pay payments if you miss payments or they would pay off the vehicle. There's some uh, lenders that get insurance against paying off the whole vehicle if the loan goes bad. So you should definitely keep fighting to get that gap insurance paperwork, look it over, comb it over to make sure that it didn't have some sort of rider insurance that would either pay it off or that paid a certain amount of payments and they're not reporting that on the uh, balance that they're trying to come after you for. Uh, so now let's go with where you're at right now with the information that you got. If you get everything, gap insurance didn't, you know, you didn't qualify to get any relief from that. The next step will be they're going to take you to court and then you, it, you said, can you fight it in court? It's going to be hard for you to fight it in court, but what you'll be able to do is you'll be able to get yourself in a position to negotiate because they're going to get this judgment against you with what you've uh, shared with me right here. It could be a lower amount, but you will get an opportunity to express to the court, express to the debt collector, and you can even look at doing this before you end up going to court, is to talk to them about doing a settlement on the remaining amount. And the settlements could be any amount. Remember, if they sell this debt to a collector, they're buying it for pennies on the dollar. If they're coming after you as the original creditor and they hired a debt collector, uh, they, you know, it might end up where they may not take a larger, uh, uh, I mean, that they might not discount it as much as a debt collector would. Now, uh, the other things I want you to be aware of is your financial situation. There's, you could talk to them about that and say, you know, I cannot go through with this because of certain financial situation, medical uh, situation that you will not be able to uh, uh, pay 
the loan, even if they got a judgment, that it's going to be very tough for them to be able to collect any money. So you want to make sure that you, uh, you know, take advantage of those uh, uh, those things that could potentially waive your ability to be garnished. So they, they might go through with the judgment, but they won't be able to get anything. Uh, but from what you've t told me, and you've done very good work, you've done very good work, this is not about fighting the judgment or fighting the loan because you know that you signed for a loan and basically you're the uh, uh, person that they believe has the money and going to pay. Uh, for your daughter, there should be some sort of amount. Uh, what you should do is say, you know, can, what amount are you able to pay so we can deal with this? Because it looks like everything is kind of just been thrown on to you when you were the one that saved her when she was not able to uh, go through, uh, would not be able to even get the car if you didn't co-sign for it. So that is the process. If you have a repo, or uh, a, I mean, if you have a, a well repossession and you co-sign, that is the process that's going to get you, uh, you know, fix the problem. Uh, it's going to probably cost some money to get out of the problem unless you have some sort of financial situation or there was an insurance that was on the policy. So don't do those because, it, you know, not that you don't want to help people, but it just gets you in a bad situation because I know you expected your daughter to finish out paying that. All right. So if you need help with your credit, please visit us at thecreditrepairshop.com. Uh, if you watch the video, what makes us different? Uh, it details my eight-point validation process and my two-phase settlement process. And then if you need your credit reports and scores, go to the website, yourordernumber3scores.com. And the links are below here for my debt validation letter, cease and desist collection activities letter, and the statute of limitations letter, and other services that we do have to offer. Thanks a lot. This is Stephen A. Williams, president and founder of the creditrepairshop.com.